controllers are evolving faster than ever before. Arcade sticks can have flashing lights and cup holders. All button controllers can be big, small, or ergonomic. Handheld pro controllers are growing new buttons on the back, and some even have large arcade-style push buttons. The humble-looking arcade stick we have right here features nothing more than what appears to be an extra button stuck in the middle. Fair enough, you may say nothing wrong with having a little easier access to your favorite punches or kicks, but what you may not know is that this unassuming little button here allows you to modify your inputs so drastically that it's not even really tournament legal yet. Currently the topic of massively heated debate in the fighting game scene, it's time to take a deeper look at the antagonist. Now if you think a special button that allows you to use shortcuts or quite literally skip some technical motions entirely is cheating, you're not wrong. But the truth is things like all button controllers, which are tournament legal, have been able to do the same thing for over a decade, and the winner of last year's EVO was using one. See, for decades the arcade stick has remained more or less the same, a lever on the left and buttons on the right. But as the arcade scene has slowly been replaced by the PC and console scene, bringing your own controller to a tournament is the norm these days. This means you can play on anything that a console will recognize as a controller and as a result, tournaments now allow you to use controllers that often completely bypass the technical motions that used to be part of keeping fighting games balanced. For example, if I want to anti-air Ryu who is jumping in on me like so, I would normally have to go from the down position up through neutral and then into the jump position going from down up like this and then I get the flash kick out. And all this movement takes time and leaves me open to potential attack. But with this magical antagonist button, I quite literally don't have to do anything. I just leave myself in the crouching position, press this magical button, and flash kick comes out with me, without me ever having to move my left hand at all. But it's not just for charge characters like Guile. If you play a Shoto character like Ryu, you might stop a jump in using a dragon punch. To do so, it's forward, back through neutral to crouch, then to down forward to do the classic Shoryuken. Essentially, that's four motions on the lever, but with the antagonist, it's cut in half to just two. Like any impressive magic trick, you're probably wondering how it works, but first let's take a look at what you get when you buy the antagonist. Essentially, it's a chip that sits in between your arcade stick lever and the PCB that sends inputs to your PC or console running the game. You get the main antagonist PCB and a couple wires, but for the button itself, you have to purchase it separately. They could have included a button in the box, but for example, I've installed it as a non-destructive mod thanks to this thumb jump add-on from the AS Indo Cardibod. So it makes sense that they ask you to just provide your own button so that you can choose whether to drill a hole in your arcade stick or not. Wiring it up is simple enough as everything connects through screw terminals, so there's no need to get a soldering iron out. But you will have to Google your current arcade stick to find out which wire is which. The other thing is that the antagonist requires 5 volts of power. Now if you're using a Brook fighting board, there's often a 5 volt power supply you can connect to, but if your PCB isn't accessible or just doesn't provide a place to steal power from, you can actually power the antagonist using the micro USB port and something like a mobile battery. Once you've plugged in the PCB and attached your new button to the top plate of your arcade stick, the next thing you're gonna want to do is program the button itself. Now I say program, but it's not like it involves code or anything. In fact, you don't even need a computer because the antagonist can be set up entirely through Bluetooth and a free app you just download to your phone. The app itself is straightforward and to choose how the antagonist behaves, you just select from one of the five modes. Now five modes may sound complicated, but really there are only two main ways of using the antagonist. The first and simpler of the two is jump mode. This basically gives you a second up direction and it acts the same way that, that most all button controllers work. Press while standing, you jump. Press it while crouching, you jump. Press it while walking forward, you jump forward. Press it while holding back, you jump back. Now you're probably wondering, if the antagonist button basically means you can do the same things as an all button controller, then the question is, why not use one of these instead? Well, the answer is that even though all button controllers allow for some shortcuts and techniques that almost seem unfair, the benefit of the antagonist is that you get many of these same advantages plus the benefit of technical inputs that are easier on an arcade stick. See, all button controllers allow you to press opposing directions at the same time, and as a result, motions like half circles or 360 inputs are actually a little bit harder. I can't tell you how many times I've input a half circle in King of Fighters only for the move to fail because I rushed the input. But with an arcade stick, I can use the lever as I always do, for easy, intuitive half circle inputs, and then press the antagonist button for easy dragon punch shortcuts whenever I need to. At this point, I think we need to take a step back and think about what this really means for the future of controllers in fighting games. 
This isn't just some little gimmick. This is potentially the last stand for the arcade stick. For the past three years, especially all button controllers like this one have been absolutely taking over. And it more and more, it just feels like there's less reason to use an arcade stick. There's no real justification for playing a non-arcade stick. But the antagonist button is kind of like the great equalizer. You stick it on your arcade stick and now it can look at things like the all button controller and go, anything you can do, I can do better. Only it can't really because the all button controller can still do way more and is more powerful, but it gets us a little closer. Unless... Using the antagonist in jump mode is already a bit of a game changer, but it goes so, so much deeper. See, Capcom backed themselves into a corner when they partnered with Sony to finish development on Street Fighter V, because the DualShock 4 allows you to hold directions on the D-pad and override those inputs with the analog stick. That's right, the official PlayStation controller allows you to use two directional inputs at the same time to play in tournaments, with prize money up to $250,000. Surely no one is going to exploit this situation. Say hello to the hitbox cross-up. An all-button controller and an arcade stick kind of stuck together in one that allows you to use two directional inputs at the same time. If it sounds like that shouldn't be tournament legal, well, you're right, it probably shouldn't. But too late, it's explicitly tournament legal at EVO and for Capcom Pro Tour, it's kind of grey zone. But what's so special about the cross-up anyway, and how does it relate to the antagonist? Well, by placing an analog stick where the eight-way lever usually goes, and by splitting the D-pad into four separate buttons and adding them to the right side where the attack buttons are, the cross-up makes various shortcuts much easier. We're talking about shortcuts that were previously possible on the DualShock 4, but honestly, not that practical. Well, once again, the antagonist is here to bless the humble arcade stick with some of those unfair advantages, and it does this using its second mode, which I'm going to call reverse mode. Left is right, up is down, short is long, everything you know is wrong. Let me explain. There's nothing special about pressing two directions at once. Obviously, if you're crouch blocking, which is one of the main things you'll be doing in the game the whole time, that's actually pressing two directions at the same time. You're pressing back to block, and you're crouching at the same time, so you're crouch blocking. What's broken about the DualShock 4 and, as a result, the hitbox cross-up is the fact that you can press opposing cardinal directions at the same time. On the DualShock 4, because you have two sets of movement controls, you can be pressing left on one set and you can be pressing right on the other set. So instead of charging back for a couple seconds, then moving to the forward position in order to get those moves to come out, I just hold back on one set of directions and I press forward on a separate set of directions. And as a result, the move comes out much faster, I spend zero time in neutral, and as soon as I let go of the other direction controller here on the analog stick, I'm instantly back in the backwards position, charging up for my next boom to come out and just locking down my opponent. But as I said before, this isn't really practical because as you can see, I've got my left thumb on the D-pad here and normally I have my right thumb here on the buttons. But to do this technique where you use the right analog stick, you need to have a finger over here on the analog stick in order to do it, which means that you're now relying on your fingers in a weird position in order to do the special techniques that use the right analog stick and the buttons and the d-pad. Well now with this antagonist button I can get the same effect. I can be holding back on the analog stick and just do one touch like this to get my sonic booms out without ever having to move my left hand to the forward position. Now there's actually two main variants of this reverse mode that help you deal with crouching. In booms mode the antagonist button outputs a clean forward input whether you're holding back or down back. This is the mode we were just using, and it means you can do sonic booms whether you're standing or crouching. The other variant of this mode outputs a neutral up input instead. So whether you're crouch blocking or crouch walking, the antagonist button allows you to do super easy flash kicks. All right, so we've been using Guile for most of these examples, but what about the other characters? Let's whiz through some of the other tricks that I've found after some experimentation. As Sakura, the antagonist button makes dragon punches easier. It feels like two motions instead of three, so it physically takes less time to do. Pit confirming a fireball into a heavy dragon punch is slightly faster and easier. It also makes Sakura's light kick into Dragon Punch poke buffers way smoother and easier to do repeatedly. As Akuma, it's easier to input teleport, and as a bonus, you also spend no time in neutral. His red fireball is now insanely easy because you can change five inputs into just two. And now Demon Flip is not only easier, but your opponent will barely see you crouch before it comes out. As Kage, instant air fireballs are now easier to time since you input the forward or neutral jump and the punch command with the same hand. As Zangief you have quite a few alternatives to the circular motions for spinning pile driver. In jump mode, you can do a half circle instead of rolling the lever into a jump at the end. You also get an easier instant air EX command grab. 
similar to the easier timing for Kage's instant air fireballs. In kicks mode, you get a faster input on command grab, that's four motions instead of six. In booms mode, you can do a faster running grab, which is two motions instead of five. And in jump mode, you get faster parries using the same shortcut used for dragon punches. Useful if you need that parry to come out as fast as physically possible. Now we've already covered some guile advantages, but as a character based almost entirely around the idea of opposing cardinal directions for his inputs, he unsurprisingly has the most tricks. Sonic booms become ultra easy. You quite literally have no need to move the stick at all. There's no need to stand up or even aim for a clean forward input. Just lock yourself in the corner of your square gate, press the antagonist button, and you're good to go. You get easier flash kick into critical art because even if you're crouching, the antagonist guarantees a clean forward input instead of accidental diagonals, which would cause the critical art input to fail. You also get super easy critical art. Again, there's no need to move the stick at all. You just tap the antagonist button twice, add a punch button, and feel now in Boom's down mode, you can actually do something that might be useful for charging mid-air. Since the antagonist button will now press down for you in neutral, you're basically playing upside down. Jump in the sky, use the antagonist to charge down while mid-air jumping. Then when you land, just tap the lever down to reverse it into an up input for the final flash kick. I don't play Batista in Undernight Inbirth, but I imagine that using a button to charge both up and down depending on the situation could be quite useful. In kicks neutral mode, you get easy flash kicks. It's similar to how SOCD cleaning works on an all-button controller, but it always results in neutral jump, even if you're holding left or right while crouching. Jump mode works too, but it will result in forward or backward jump if you press the antagonist button while crouch blocking or crouch walking. And you also get easier flash kick into critical art because you can use the antagonist button to avoid pushing up on the lever at all. I'm sure there's plenty more the antagonist can do, but hopefully this gives you a general idea of how you can break the game to make moves come out faster, easier, and with fewer vulnerabilities. Thanks to this clever button, the arcade stick doesn't have to die out and has enough modern tricks that it can stay relevant for the next generation of fighting games, right? Well, unfortunately, that's the part that's not so clear and it's not looking good for the antagonist. See, the controllers you can use at a tournament are governed by rules and if you don't follow them, you can say goodbye to your chance of winning the big $1 million that Capcom is advertising for next year's Capcom Cup. At the time of making this video, it seems that the antagonist is still in a pretty grey zone. Use of macros, turbos, or any peripheral which tampers with standard game functionality is prohibited. Any customization beyond the capabilities of a standard PS4 DualShock 4 is prohibited. The maximum amount of directional command inputs is 4. A player cannot assign the same directional command to two different buttons. A controller can have both move button and a lever simultaneously. However, the controller must give up the corresponding input on the lever. Players are not allowed to add function that deletes or disables the input information for attack commands or directional commands. Listen up. Whether or not the controller is legal at tournaments, there's nothing to stop you from using the antagonist on your PlayStation and going online. The only problem would be if you arrive at a tournament and you can't play properly because you rely too heavily on shortcuts and tricks that you're not allowed to use offline. What's actually more interesting though is the future of controllers in fighting games. Having an unlimited number of options sounds great in terms of creativity and accessibility, but as a competitive sport, the rules have a serious impact on the way these games are played. If you're allowed to bring a rocket-powered AI tennis racket to a baseball game, then sure, it opens up the game creatively, but then nobody would use baseball bats anymore, and bit by bit, the game will just cease to retain the things that made it baseball. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a discussion for another time, but if you ask me, the antagonist is exactly what the scene needs right now. We don't have to preserve the arcade stick by banning all the new controllers, we just need to level the playing field. It's time to give arcade sticks the fancy tricks that everyone else has. It's time to give them the antagonist. Well, that's my review of this controversial new button. If it is allowed in tournaments, it could be pretty disruptive in good ways and in bad ways, but I'm just really excited because it's such a cool time for controllers right now, especially with Street Fighter VI coming out later this year and Tekken 8 just around the corner and looking better with every trailer that comes out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, comment on the video if you haven't done so already, give it a like, and hey, while you're at it, why not check out another video? I'll put one right here, it'll be up your alley if you love the latest gear. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. I can't wait to see you in the next one.